there and a pleasant welcome to the National News Chronicle today here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. I am Hassan Kouma for the headlines. Dr. Altsley from the UKP who is on the call to help transform the first matter bank from the doldrums of economic collapse to now an end of the state. The Tunde Banking Landscape speaks on its journey to success and challenges. They jump through in making what Alzi Bank is today. My professional journey since I left college has been one wherein I worked in the Central Bank okay. as the Bank of Sierra Leone. I worked in the Research Department, I worked in the International um, Finance Department, and I also worked on banking supervision. Sierra Leone local content agency engages small regional businesses and multinational companies in a business around the meeting in that creating market linkages between aforementioned pairs. This meeting, round table, will discuss with market supplier issues, ways of collaboration between both our local suppliers and that of our big businesses, the multinationals. Nasi to construct students who sells an affordable houses in Syria. For these, uh, some of these campuses, seven campuses we have identified, we are going to give them student hostels to accommodate uh, not all of the students that may require this um, housing facility. And in sports, President of Ursula Day, Thomas Dali Lema, unveils the female Premier League board, headed by Asma James. All these stories for small and for you into this edition of the Star National News. Those are the headlines, and now for the news in details with me, Hassan Kouma. Dr. Walter Lekondor Gilpin is a sourceful, self motivated, and professional economist with over 25 years of practical experience in economic policy management, international development, public finance management, macroeconomic analysis, as well as public debt management. He is on record to have transformed one of Sierra Leone's indigenous bank, Opera Commercial Bank, from the doldrums of economic collapse to now an area state within the banking landscape. Dr. Gilpin speaks about his journey to success and challenges. He jumped through in making the Alzi Bank what it is today. There's a report. Well, thank you. Um, I must say initially that I give all glory to God for where God has taken me from and brought me. You know, I am a, I'm a, an economist and um, a banker. My professional journey since I left college has been one wherein I worked in the Central Bank. Okay. That's the Bank of Sierra Leone. I worked in the research department. I worked in the international um, finance department and I also worked on banking supervision and during that era we worked quite extensively with partners from um, developing agencies like the World Banks, the IMFs, the African Development Bank, okay. Commonwealth Secretariat, you know worked quite a lot with external partners on building the economy and so being a fresh guy out of Fabric College, you know, U University of Sierra Leone at that time uh, we didn't have much about IPAM or we didn't know much about JALA. We knew more about Frobe College and okay. the orientation there was quite rigid, you know. So we came out there really strong and I believe we were able to stand the test of time by pairing up yeah. with yeah. international economists as it were, okay. international bankers as it were. And that's where I started my, my journey. And from that stage, I was able to move on to the international stage. I mean after doing my, my master's, came back home. Then, of course, the war was around, and during the war, we had a lot of issues, as okay. we all know. And I moved out, and got opportunities out there. Oh, yeah. Then I started working internationally, where I was out for about 18 years. Okay. You know, and then came back home. Well, when I was out, I didn't mean I was out of the country per se, I never came back home. I used to come home on mission, you know, like join missions with the IMF, the World Bank, the Commonwealth Secretariat. The so I used to come to Sierra Leone as part of teams before, so I did have a, uh, a knowledge of what was going on okay. because I was working within the system. And then eventually I came back home in around 2017. I came home and I was working with the, a project run by the European Union. Right. I did that for a bit and then I went to Gambia to work on a project for the IMF. Came back home, completely continued working with the um, European Union project. Then we well, actually building up the PFM framework for Sierra Leone. It was quite pivotal um, at the time. I think it still is, okay. you know, and then I got called up for some interviews and discussions to work in the, um, should I say, in the economic. 
Don't try to be a perfect imitation of somebody else. Right. Be yourself. So I challenge myself. I am standard for myself. I get angry with myself for not going to the gym when I said I'll go to the gym. For not waking at six when I said I wake up at six. I get angry with myself. I am my own standard. I don't want to be no Shua's nigga because I can never be a Shua's nigga. <laughs> As a way to create market linkages between small and regional businesses and multinational companies, Sierra Local Content Agency has held a business roundtable meeting for the aforementioned players at its Timor Street office of Sandra Street Freetown at the Bali High Policing Port. This business roundtable meeting, according to the Director General of the Sierra Local Content Agency, for the Badabo, is aimed at initiating a conversation between small indigenous businesses and multinational companies in order to foster collaboration and strengthen effective market linkages. Um, this meeting as a way for background is a key deliverable for the work of this agency. Um, local content, as I've always reiterated, is not only about employment. It goes way beyond employment for our locals. As a matter of fact, if we have the goal in making sure that we make this economy a local content economy, we need to lessen the gap. There is a clear disconnect between, you will agree with me, our big multinationals at every level and that of our local entrepreneurs. This meeting, roundtable, will discuss with market supplier issues ways of collaboration between both our local suppliers and that of our big businesses, the multinationals. When speaking, the newly appointed Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Isaiah Abdullah Kamara, emphasized the importance of the growth of our local content, noting that it is the heartbeat of any economy. And this is how you promote local content. So in the business of the, the carpenters and the, the art people, even for the art people, we have a lot of natural diversity that you can make use of. When you enter our bush, we have all sorts of bits. All sorts of bits. If you enter the our bushes are full of all sorts of bits that you can be able to make parts or whatsoever. But we are not creative enough to see how we add value to them. There are certain bits these Chinese are just doing. It's just how you follow them, how you increase their variety. Just do that. So if we start to do things we produce on a larger scale, then we, it becomes habitual for us in Arena. Instead of, you see me, I don't put on your rings. Well, everything that I put is of culture. I can only put watch because at least I've not seen a culture yet, <laughs> thing that they can give me watch. But most times, I like to go local, natural. Government should make, make sure that Anything that is local but is of value, they need to propagate that word so that it can reach the international market. That's what I think. This roundtable meeting attracted players in the hospitality sector, agribusinesses, arts and crafts, clothing and textile, carpentry and cosmetics. Most of the people who do business here, then they avoid that thing they call paperwork. With man believe, see, anything where they do so far, not to call for Koga, yeah, then tell me, see, written history is the best. If you say this is the process I'm doing, they expect you to say for put on a paper. Say now this process, are this, because they take us to the life not to get her. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow they pass away. If now you end they say for make this water, it didn't have made, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, in case you go to the door, you know, what they continue with that program, they nobody ends. So, but if you don't put on a paper, even if you are not there, you understand? All about the people, the SOPs, yeah? Mm -hmm. People, they wait and they follow them thing again. I feel that they need the regulator they do. They kind of try to bring you to compliance so that you may be able to compete out there. I have benefited from the engagement with local content because I don't think my business will even be where it is had I not actually registered with this um, organization. They've helped me um, get my products tested and I had to pay 70% less um, than what somebody else would do 
that has given my product credibility because I've got certification from the Standards Bureau. And they also try to showcase us as much as they can. The fact that our products can now be, you know, competing with different products. You go to the supermarkets and you can basically say, as it's really been fine, put some of my products here at the local contact shelf, but then I want the other one to be there because my product is competitive. And I am in a competitive program. If I'd gone there on my own, it doesn't matter who I am. For Star TV News in Freetown, Alfie Barry on the news. NASA has signed an MOU with China Gansu International Corporation for economic and technical cooperation for the construction of hostels in seven universities and affordable houses across the country, aimed at solving the paying our students' accommodation problem and improving the housing sector. As well as to Kamala reports. As part of its social interventions to support government flagship program, the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, NASIT, under the distinguished leadership of the Director General, Mohamed Fouad Dabo, on Thursday, 10th March 2022, signed a memorandum of understanding between NASIT and China Gansu International Corporation for Economic and Technical Cooperation an international Chinese company for the construction of additional modern students' hostels in seven universities' campuses and 5,000 affordable housing across the country. We are looking at student hostels for some of our universities. As you are aware, we have several other universities added to the original ones we know, that of uh, Fulbe College, Jalai University, and um, IPAN. For now, we have uh, Eastern Polytechnic, we have Freetown Polytechnic, and um, we also have Mitzmagana as a university. So, which means for these, uh, some of these campuses, about seven campuses we have identified, we are going to give them student hostels to accommodate uh, not all of the students that may require this um, housing facility. As such, each of these hostels have been identified to give us 400 rooms, of which uh, 350 rooms will be double bedrooms and then 50 will be executive rooms, um, fully air conditioned for um, postgraduate students. The seven universities' campuses include Frobe College, Jala University, College of Medicine and Aligned Health Science, Milti Magai Technical University, Freetown Polytechnic, University of Makeni, and Eastern University. You know, this project especially for the students hostels and affording house very important we have visited especially for the you know the Sierra Leone University sometimes you know the actually we we are getting some uh, impression for this because this is very important for the student hostels because the traffic the, the students will be on the way. It, it is convenient for the students. This is a reality. The trust sets to construct 400 rooms in each of the seven campuses aforementioned, with befitting facilities to make lives possible and easier for students in campuses. The China Gansu International Economic and Technical Cooperation Company Limited as well as the China Hualong International Construction Corporation. We want to welcome you to Sierra Leone, even if you have been here before, but for expressing intention to work with one of our most formidable institutions in the country. I have had time to go through the, the, the MOU last night, so I have my some few issues there. But it's an MOU. Like you said, it's the most important aspect has to do with the actual agreement and how you move forward. But I am happy that we are taking this particular step and I want to assure the chairman and the members of the board of trustees, including the management of NASIT, that this is a welcome development. I have discussed with the DG that an institution like NASIT should not be seen to be quiet for a year without showing something tangible that the state must be proud of. Otherwise, you stand to doubt the leadership. So I'm happy you listen to that. What is going on today in Poloko and what we are doing now are going to be living testimonies. Speaking at the signing ceremony, NASIT Director General Mohamed Fouad Dabo said, 
The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding was an establishment of the relationship between the trust and the partners, and that was a prelude to move forward with the project of constructing student hostels and affordable housing across the country. He said, the Memorandum of Understanding was the basis of what they intend to achieve in the future for the people of Sierra Leone. We are coming in as an intervention and a singular flagship project of government and the free quality education, which you started as a minister. Once enrollment in secondary schools and university uh, multiplies, the principal there from the college is challenged with accommodation. And we believe that um, as a social security institution, these are the social interventions to support government initiative and make life possible and easier for students on campus. I agreed that we had had campus accommodation over 100 years ago, particularly in traditional universities. Much has not been done in terms of improving on those accommodations. We are not only going to add additional accommodation, Mr. Minister, but the accommodation we are going to add is going to match with the times and events of current situations. Gone are the days when students have to move from their rooms to go to the library to do research. The accommodation we are talking about, Honorable Minister, is for students to be in their rooms, to access internet, to do their research, to drive their papers and present to the lecturers. That's what we are attempting to, to achieve. And that achievement is going to support the initiative of government. For Star News, compiled by Ahmed Jones Kamara, read in the studio by Hassanatu Kamara. On December 5, 2021, at the 189th Seminarian General Conference, at the General Women's Session, President Joseph M. Nelson announced the location of the Freetown Serial Temple as a 2.9 acre site on Jewel Road, located in Coastal Town region in the east end of Freetown. The single story Sierra Leone Temple will be approximately 18,000 square feet. The town, Antilai Building, also constructed. Kenneth Pambu is the president of Sierra Leone Chapter. He spoke to Adama Kamara in this interview, together with Mosilin Abdullahi and Johnny Christopher Waters on the significance of the establishment of the temple. I'm going to start the vision. My name is Abdul Alam Kamara, the station manager for Star TV. I understand the church. Of Jesus Christ, which are the saints, will be embarking on a groundbreaking project where they will have the first ever temple in Sierra Leone. For the benefit of hindsight, what is the temple? Thank you, Mr. Kamara, and thank you for having me. My name is Kenneth Pango, and I serve as the president of Free Pass Radio State. That's a very good question. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ are not having the saints. We have looked forward to having a temple and we've really prayed for, for that. Some have been fasted. And this is the first temple that we built in Sierra Leone. So it might be the excitement and we are all looking forward to that. Um, it's a big blessing for the country and it's a house of the Lord. Members consider it. Uh, it is also a place where sacred ordinances are performed like marriages. It is also a place where we look upon as the Lord's house. So this is a very big blessing that we are all looking forward to. So the excitement is everywhere and the grand region will be done on Saturday. Madam Abulai, um, there is obviously a difference between when we talk of a temple and a chapel. You would like to give us a differentiation? Thank you very much, Mr. And my name is Moslina, I'm the Youth Society State President. Okay, the difference between a chapel and a temple. Let's first of all, let's understand the meaning of chapel. The chapel is a place of meeting house where all the members, whether members or non members, are coming to there and worship, serve God, and all that. So that's what's the meaning of meeting house. And when we talk about the temple, just like what President Babur have said, it's a place of separate ordinances where certain things have been performed is the house of the Lord. Non-members are not accepted to be there. It's only full-time members. Faithful members are only accepted to enter into the temple. So these are the things that are done in the temple and 
these are things that I don't do then it's in the house. So it's different. Okay. I bring in uh, um, Johnny Waters, uh, the rationale behind uh, the church having its first ever temple in Sierra Leone. How did you come to Asia? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Johnny Christopher Waters. I'm also a stake resident uh, for Bobby Stake in Bo. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kamara, for such a wonderful question. And uh, we understand that Heavenly Father loves us so much, and so he had designed special places in order to commune with his children. And biblically, when we uh, look around, we found out that in the Garden of Eden, God was able to commune with uh, Adam and Eve. Mount Sinai also, we understand that Moses went up there to receive the Ten Commandments. Uh, we are present at the Mount of Transfiguration with the Savior Jesus Christ. So these are all special places Heavenly Father created for special purposes. And we believe that um, temples are very much important. They did not start in our own day, but they will be existed even in the old times. And after the death of the, of the apostles, after Jesus Christ left, we found out that this temples we are taking off from earth and then uh, it was brought back after uh, the restoration of uh, the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints in 1830 of joseph Smith. so that is why we hold our temples very much next year because we know the relevance of temples and we, we believe that god can instruct his children in the temple um before i bring in uh, madam Abdullah, you may want to add but again, the question is, how will this move forward in terms of the progress so far made by the church, um, in terms of evangelism and the rest? What is the innermost significance of this particular initiative by the church? Thank you very much. It's very, very important. And one way we can be able to bring people into the kingdom, that's what we have as the mission has to help to evangelize and bring souls into the kingdom. And it's very important for us as a Syrian Union to have the first temple in Israel. It's very, very pleasing to me personally, and I will be grateful for that. And I know with all, with, with all of my heart that this temple is going to be the most important thing upon this country. And it's going to be very important to each and every one for Syrian Union. You want to Yes. And by extension, when we talk of a temple, what is inside the temple? Unlike the average sacrament hall, where we all are to worship on Sunday, the temple is partitioned so that it allows us to receive instructions. It also allows us to have secret rooms where we can go into our quiet prayers and also secret ordinances are performed. So we have smaller rooms where we have a quiet and peaceful atmosphere where we receive all gospel instructions. So that is the beauty of the temple. And once you enter the temple, you feel at peace, you feel the quietness, and you have a place to meditate. So that is the innermost part of the temple. That is the difference between the temple and our general garden. Forgive me, yeah. You are I want to add something to us, President. Okay, the whole episode of the summer, for everything about the glory in the world, like you enter into the temple, is the most quiet place in the entire whole world. It's the most peaceful place in the entire universe. In that place, you can find peace, joy, happiness. You have the opportunity to communicate between you and your Heavenly Father. And in the temple, we have like a clothes that we normally put on when we are in the temple. We put on white, it signifies that oh, peace, happiness, joy, unity, and most of all, purity. So we put on that white clothes to enter the temple. And then the temple is the most quiet place. Even if a needle fall on the ground, you can hear the sound of it. I want to thank you so very much for honoring this invitation and part of um, this interview. This morning, looking forward to a very successful and wonderful project by the Church of Jesus Christ Later the Saints. Thank you so very much. Sir. You're welcome. I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. Sir. Looking forward to seeing you there tomorrow. Good. <laughs>
Let's turn our attention to the sporting world. The president of SLFA, Thomas Daddy Bema, has officially unveiled the female Premier League board headed by Asma James. Let's join our sporting portal, Tim John, for more on the sporting world. Hello everyone, welcome for to the Sporting News. The station manager of Lady Democracy, Madam Kasima James, has been appointed as the chairperson of the Premier League Board in Sierra Leone. This is the first time in the history in Sierra Leone football for women to have a board. According to the president of the Sierra Leone Football Association, Thomas Daddy Bible. Madam has been changed to help to develop the standard of female football in the continent. Here is the report. As a respect and symbol of hand, officially handling over the affairs of running the elite female league, the Sierra Leone Football Association Executive Members officially hand our favorite jersey and this football. We take this as a sign of respect and a way of saying take over. The Sierra Football Association has on Friday, March 18, unveiled the newly appointed Women's Premier League Board who are charged with the responsibility to run the 2022-2023 Sierra Leone Women's Premier League. The board constitutes of seven members, headed by seasoned media personality and station manager of Radio Democracy 98.1, Madam Asma James. Among the members who are part of the women's board are Madam Asma James, Chairperson, Justina Metiri Secretary, Angela Gavisin, ESQ member, Geneva Isequi member, Daniela Mansare member, Zainab S. Comte member, Emilia Kamara Jango member. Unveiled the board, Sierra Leone Football Association President Thomas Daddy Brimer said the setting of the board is a fulfillment of his leadership promise to promote female football in the country and assured the board of FA's unflinching support. It's a wonderful day. Wonderful in the sense, slowly we are making progress. It's been a while. We've not heard of a board, a female board, whose responsibility will be to run the elite female football in Sierra Leone. <coughs> As I listened to the Secretary General, something came to my mind. We've not played female football in Sierra Leone in a long time. Organized female football. And so when we decided to put a board together, we said, let's bring people who's got what it takes, who can bring value to the game. Today, we're here to unveil I heard the Secretary General saying, without them being unveiled, the already performing wonders, and exactly this is what we have been looking for. People who will bring value, added value to the game. Yes, you might have played football. Yes, you might have been in football for 30 years. Yes, you might have spent months in football. But that is all different from people that have what it takes to administrate football. People who knows, who understand what our game plan is as an executive. We don't want to fail. We want to succeed. And if we want to succeed, we bring in people 
who we trust, people who we believe that will accelerate at the pace we want to go. I know the executive committee and my very self being the president. We are happy. We are moving and we are going to support this board. Maybe I should not have said this, but uh, now that the media is here, when we say support, we are going to support the board fully. Two weeks ago, we knew our football was going to be in problems because the stadium is closed. Very soon we'll be closing these other grounds because of uh, we are expecting the 2.1 for the uh, project funds to roll in. We'll be doing five pitches right around the country. And so we sat as an executive to say, you know what? Maybe let's take the risk and ask FIFA for some money. Also present at the unveiling ceremony, where Harana Johnson, Vice President 1 at the CLN Football Association, Ali Banada Tawali, Vice President 2, and other ESCO executive members, Brahma Jalo, Kweku Leaks ESQ, Mohamed Ez Jalo, Madame Ramatolai Kamara, and Prince Sakui. On behalf of the board, Chairperson Hasma James appreciated the work and support of the CLN Football Association and promised to deliver in Ateno. Meanwhile, the Sierra Football Association will provide support for the board and also the government of Sierra Leone through the Ministry of Sports and the National Sport Authority. For Star TV Sports in Freetown, I am Ilton John reporting. Congratulations to Madam Hasma James and members of the newly constructed Premier League board. We hope that they will deliver in their turn. The head coach of the Sierra National Team, John Kistner, said he's optimistic that he will qualify for the upcoming Nations Cup 2020 to be hosted in Ivy Coast. The Ostans of Sierra will play two international friendly matches on the 24th, the 27th, and the 29th in Tokyo. The delegation hopefully will travel this weekend. So we share all the best the team to Tokyo. I hope that our boys will deliver in these friendly matches among the countries here we will play, like the uh, Congo, Lazarus. So that's all for sports. For today's news, back to Hassan in the studio. This is all we have time for today's edition of the Star National News. They are on Star TV Digital Network on Channel 21. I am Hassan Kouma. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.